we're going to be doing for you today, we're going to be mounting a Wrangler MT onto the 16.5 ring, the wheel. Um, we've got everything laid out. We've got the Wrangler MT here. This is a 16.5 wheel that has been uh, sandblasted and primer coated and painted. This is the gasket for this particular wheel. Now, when you go to buy it, now we're, this particular one's coming from Cascar, this, uh, this O-ring. And if you look at your wheel, you'll notice that you have one extra hole. That one extra hole determines what O-ring you're going to be using, so you got to make sure you've got the right O-ring for the wheel that you're using. That line, that hole also lines up with the rim. Okay. So what we also have here, we're going to be balancing. Once we have the the wheel, the, the tire mounted on the the rim, the wheel, we're going to be using the easy tire beads system to balance it. We're going to be using 10 ounce for the tire. And this kit comes with the bottle cap, tube, valve core tool, uh, 12 ounces of beads in each one of the bags, uh, valve caps. You want to use this special kind of valve cores because the beads, if you use a regular valve core, it's going to clog up your uh, valve core, so you want to use the, the correct type, and it has instructions. Okay, so I'm first going to put a lot of soapy water here because we're going to try to put this bead lock the way we saw some other videos. So where your valve stem is going to be, this cutaway also needs to be up. So you need to determine you need to determine where the top of your tire is going to be and where you want this placed. So bear with us because this is the first time we try it. There's not too many other videos out there. So this wasn't a one-person job. <laughs> we both had to do it. We paused the video there. But once we popped it in, it looks like it wants to move now. So make sure you have some other person with you when you're doing it. So basically what we had to do was we had to put our feet on the bottom of the, the bead lock. Like this. Like that, and pull up on the uh, the the oh. tire at the same time, the oh, inside of the tire. So, yeah, not, not too easy. Okay, so Tony's going to get that bead lock in there. Okay, so there it is. Took some hard work. Eric did his kung fu grip there. Okay. You know, this is where that tire tool would come into play. And, and we're going to tool, you can stick it up. Inside. Yeah, we're going to pry it slightly and we're going to get it back in there. Yeah. But this is what it's supposed to look like. Yeah. So we put it up on its angle here and I'm just knocking it in to make sure it's nice and flat. And we need to know where the valve stem portion is. Okay, so here's the valve stem portion. And this is the front of the tire that I want out on our spare here. Um, we're preparing this bottom piece of the rim on a bucket and some cardboard because trying to lift the tire is going to be a two-man lift and we need the bead to go right through. Okay, so real quick, we ran to Lowe's to get this round disc. It's used to make stools. So that way we can properly prop up the, uh, the rim. 
so that way the bolts can reach the cover. We just tested it. It does reach. Now to prep the beads inside the wheel. Okay, so here we are inside the house. We're going to measure out the beads for this uh, test here. Each of these uh, vehicles are going to need 10 ounces, and we'll put a link to the website that actually explains it. So we were getting ready to do this, and uh, we were almost timed out. So I had to use a second, a second set. Just a tad bit more. There she is, 10 ounces. Okay, perfecto. Okay, so this uh, little squeeze bottle here comes with the package from Easy Beats. We cut the end off of it so the beads will come out. And basically, what we're going to do is we're going to insert the beads through the hole where the The valve stem goes the valve into. Stem will go. exactly. As you can see, it's already flowing. That works out pretty well. I couldn't get all 10 ounces into this, so I'm going to have to fill it up more than once. Well, there goes Eric, you know, using uh, his calibrated hand there. He's filling up the bottle. Um, I think the uh, other way to do it is actually before putting that bead lock in, you just toss all the beads inside. Um, you, it'll be rattling and rolling when you do it, but um, either which way you do, It'll, it'll get in there. Well, it turned out to be uh, three bottles worth, not just uh, two. And then we use our fingers just to grab the, the last ones in there. So we need to know exactly where the, the valve is to the placement of the bead. So it's one, two, three from this hole. Three in center, so, so basically right there. we're going to make a little mark right here, so we know that's where we need to p place the bead. Here's the... Ready? Okay, so there goes the mark we put, and you can see the bead lock right there too. So, the whole purpose of this, so that we would have threads that we could get a grip on. Okay, so Eric there uh, put some oil on the uh, ring, the O-ring itself. He's placing it into the groove. You can see the grooves where it needs to sit. Sits pretty good on the entire process right there. Now we're gonna put the cover on it. Okay, so if we lined everything up properly, this goes right where it needs to go. There's enough room up here for the top bead to sit. You have them all there and you got the holes lined up right here. All right, so now it's gonna be the process some, of putting in all the lock nuts on. Yep, some torquing and uh, we'll get to that in a few seconds. Okay, so so we keep ourselves honest here. We went ahead and numbered the tips the with a with a permanent mar a marker. Uh, it'll come off easy later on, uh, so that way we can just keep the star pattern in a sequence. Hey, this is a 
11, 12. Yeah, it makes it much, it makes it much easier when you got them numbered. You don't lose the sequencing that you're in. Or you can create yourself a little cardboard template in front of it if you don't want to mark the, the tips like I did. Okay, so we are slightly pooped. Eric did about five turns just to get it to a point where we have the very first torque of 85 on all the bolts. And the nuts so he's prepping the torque wrench for the the 125 torque we're gonna set the tire up on its side so we can use a little bit more of our weight to torque it down so uh, it's looking pretty good right now it's looking like a an assembled tire without the run flat okay so Eric's already tightened uh, eight of the bolts we just uh we're down to the last four we want it so you can hear it nine and, nine and ten when you hear that clicking sound you know you reach your torque Once you've got them all down to 125, you don't have to be in a star pattern anymore, but go around and hit each one of them. Make sure you're getting the click. Make sure you've got them all correct before you go any farther. All right, sports fans. That's the valve stem. That's a special valve stem that goes with the, uh, when you buy the beads. The balancing from, beads. From the balancing beads from Easy Beads. Uh, you can't use a regular valve stem because the beads will get inside and they'll clog it. So this is a special bead for that. I'm going to go ahead and install it. I still can't see how you're going to keep the air from escaping if you don't have your valve stem. Now I have a small little pancake uh, compressor which may have to turn on a couple of times. We got a bad air leak here. It appears to be coming from where the O-ring should have seated. So it's either broken or because it was fatter than the other O-ring, it just never did seat properly. As you can see, this thing's leaking like a sieve. And with this torque down to 125 foot-pounds, it has 45 PSI of air in it. I don't think we want to push it any farther. So. This is it for today.